All right, producers, welcome back. It's time to tackle the cinematic sequence demo edit project using ClipChamp. Okay. I know some of you haven't used ClipChamp yet. You've still been working in iMovie. I'd like you to give it a try. Uh, and I really would like anybody who's using a Chromebook to work on ClipChamp to reach out to me and let me know um, how you're making it successful. Because I know there are several people who are using Chromebooks and are being successful. And then a couple of people are having challenges with Chromebooks. So I like ClipChamp for what it does. Uh, it's a little bit more functional than simply working off iMovie. So here we go. I'm going to start this project off by creating a video. So I'm going to click on this button right here. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to choose widescreen for this video. Because this is a typical video project and widescreen is going to work out for us. Okay. So here I go. I have my blank ClipChamp interface. And uh, the first thing I need to do is add some footage to the library. Um, I've already gone to the Google Classroom and I've downloaded the footage. Uh, if you wanted to see that really quick, I'll go here and um, wait, I can go here into our Google Classroom and switch over to intro to or TV video A and B right now have the same assignments. I'm going to go into Classwork, Introduction to Cinematic Sequencing. I'm going to scroll down to where we have the Cinematic Sequence Media. I'm going to click on that. And then I can go ahead and take this whole folder full of media. I can right click here and I can choose to download it to the device. The file is going to zip. Eventually, it's going to show up in my downloads folder and then from the downloads folder i can extract the files i moved them to the desktop it's in my cinematic sequence media folder and i have all of the clips right here okay once you have the clips on your computer um, or you've pulled them off of google classroom we can go back into clipchamp here and we can click right here to add media to the library. I'm going to click Browse My Files. And I'm going to go to the desktop where I have my cinematic sequence media folder. And I am going to double click to open that folder. And to start this off, I'm just going to take clips one, two, and three. Okay, just to show you how this project can move. Um, and then you can go ahead after you've cut the first few, then bring in the next few. ClipChamp tends to work pretty well as long as we don't overwhelm it. So we don't want to bring in too many clips at once. I'm going to go ahead and click open. Right now, ClipChamp is loading these files up. It's giving me a chance to use them. And I'm going to go right here and I'm going to start with the first clip. I'm going to take this clip and I'm going to drag it down to the timeline. Okay. Really quickly, it said it was assembling the clips, but then it's done. And I can play this footage back, and I can go ahead and I can watch this whole clip. The clip itself is a pretty long clip, really, at uh, about 17 seconds. Um, you know, and this is where we're kind of getting into the concept of what we're doing this week. Uh, how do we tell a good visual story and keep our audience engaged in what they're seeing? So I need to definitely trim this clip down. OK, um, so one of the first things I watch for as the clip rolls out is just action. And so far here in the first like two seconds, there hasn't been much action. I keep playing it, you know, and there's still no action right about there. If you notice, the teacher's arm started to move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this back just right before her arms move. And I'm going to go ahead and do a split here. Okay, because I felt like the first half of this clip right here, the first oh, five seconds or so were pretty dull. Nothing was really happening. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that clip right now, and I'm going to delete it. Okay, so now I've got this piece right here where she's coming in, she's moving, she's talking to the classroom. And then all of a sudden we see this boy right here begin to make a move. Okay, if you see that again, watch carefully. He begins to make a move and he begins to put his arm down. 
Okay, I am going to go ahead and just make a split on that clip right about there. Okay, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this part and I'm going to delete it because when I go into the next clip, I'm going to bring this down here and look at it in the timeline. I'm going to watch it. Okay, so now we see we've changed perspectives. This clip was quite a bit further away from the action. In the next clip, I have an opportunity to bring my audience closer to the action, okay, so they can get more connected with the character in the scenario. Um, I'm watching this clip, and still you see for the first chunk of this clip right here, nothing very exciting happens. So if I keep watching it there, I see his arm begin to move down and if i think about it wow what i just saw right here matches what he was about to do right here when he was moving his arm down so what i'm going to do is i'm going to play this again until he gets to the point where he's about to put his arm down and i'm going to stop him about mid arm so mid movement right there i'm going to go ahead and split this clip i'm going to get rid of the front clip i'm going to hit delete i'm going to play this back here we go, we see his arm going down, and then, as if nothing ever happened, the audience just got closer to the action. We see the boy's arm going down, and it continues to go down the next shot. So what we have to figure out next is what else is he going to do? He's going in here, and he's about to rip a piece of paper. But you see he stops, and he actually is challenged. He can't actually rip it out. But that's okay. Let's go in here and let's start right on the middle of an action that's about to happen. He's about to pull the paper out right there. I'm going to go ahead and split this clip and I'm going to look at the next one. Okay, I'm going to pull the next clip down. Oh, after I get rid of this, I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull the next clip down. I'm going to drop it off here. Okay, and we're going to play this again. And here we go. Now he's grabbing a piece of paper. He goes and he rips it out and he begins to crumple it up. So in this last shot, he went to pull on it. And now I have this big gap in the beginning. And here he pulls on it again. So if I want to right here, I'm going to play it. I'm going to stop it right as he's about to pull it out. I'm going to split the clip right there. I'm going to highlight the clip. Then I'm going to split the clip. Then I'm going to click on it and delete it. And watch, we should see this action flow smoothly now. Goes in, he goes to pull on it, and it gets pulled out. Now, after you make it a clip, if it's not as smooth as it looks for me, you can highlight the clip and you can go on the end, and we can stretch this out a little bit. So, if you'd like to add a little bit more to it, we could stretch it right there. So, now we see he goes to pull it. Oh, and he actually repeats it again. So, that wouldn't work out very well. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to dial it back down a little bit. If I want to see where that all that action is coming out, I can look at this right here. All right, so again, let's trim that down a little. See where we're at, trim that. So it looks like he's grabbing it and he's about to pull on it. Here he grabs it, he's about to pull on it, and it finishes. That looks pretty good. Uh, trust me. The rest of the clips can work out this way too. Every now and then you're going to cut away from the action. So you're going to cut to a reaction shot of the girl sitting across from him. And that's going to give you a chance to kind of break from the action and take control of the audience a little bit, make things somewhat dramatic. Um, but you should still look for opportunities to make these cuts on action. This should be a very quick moving sequence um, and it should feel smooth when it's all done. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording right now. Hopefully, you have a chance to work on this yourself, and uh, I'll be able to see some finished products and then let you get started designing something like this for your own project.